Um, do we have a clicker? Is that what you said? I assume we're still negotiating. I said. I didn't. But that's what I'm supposed to do. different. So I've been doing since September. <laughs> Marlon will share with you. It's okay. Yes. Because <laughs> we're all we are all very know, cozy and it's today. It is. Yeah. We're actually <laughs> nice round table. And I got cleaned up. Oh, really? <laughs> oh that's right. You that's, a, that's right. That's right. Show. For the board retreat, we'll just put that in for two hours. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> 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 I look at it, I saw it. One second, really? Really? Let's not. <laughs> it's a rather <laughs> silly place. <laughs> and it's good from that angle. Yeah. That's a, basically where it was before. Oh, yeah. This one, yeah. I saw it. Yeah. Okay. Well, we should actually have the chance out. The what? Are we thinking of moving up the student spotlight? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why? It's a civics opportunity. After the executive session? Please. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Shush. <laughs> There's no black boxes for a just for those members of the audience, if you are wishing to speak tonight, there's a form to fill out on the table. So far, I have none. Could you rise for the pledge? Back wall. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Chairs over there, if you want to sit. Anybody needs any more chairs? I mean, they're right over there. Right. Okay. Uh, note that uh, everyone is present, and we we'll move to approval of the regular session minutes of November fourteenth, twenty eighteen. Um. When we were voting on the Maxim Health Care, I believe that was in the regular mm -hmm. meeting notes, Marla. I had voted no, and it stated yes. that I voted okay. yes, and I voted no because okay. I don't like Mr. McCartney's continued under okay. the table techniques and tactics, and that's why I okay. voted no. Okay, correction. Um, so that was my only change. Anyone else? I need a motion with the uh, the change of vote with or make a motion to accept with the uh, with the change correction. from Karen. For the correction. So moved. Second. 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 I did. Okay. Okay. Uh, Weissel. Yes. 
Paul Mayer? Yes. Paul Masano? Mm -hmm. Yes. Goldberg? Yes. Scramenti? Yes. Mazurk? Yes. Ann Herman? Yes. Motion carried. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, approval of the special board minutes of November 26, 2018. So and you all sent yeah. them here. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll second. I'll second. Okay. Paul Meyer? Yes. Paul Masano? Yes. Goldberg? Yes. Scramenti? Yes. Mazurik? Yes. Herman? Yes. Weissel? Yes. Well, she carried. And uh, do, 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 do. approval of the December 2018 expenses. And you have an addition, additional bills from December 10th. I just saw that there's a termination fee for Comcast. What does that mean? That doesn't mean we're discontinuing Comcast, does it? Uh, it's, it's not very much money. It's on the new bill. Yeah. You we saw that. Right. We switch to at and for everything or vice versa? I'd love to I will have to check. I'm not sure. Comcast. Yeah, I know the majority of the, uh, what, what we do is through at and so I don't know that we do anything with Comcast now. Also, I do know. Also, I do know that as part of that um, transfer over, there were certain lines that we did eliminate because they were no longer cost effective. Oh, okay. Just a real quick note: yeah. when you see two people on phones, we're not checking our phones. We're actually looking at the agendas off our phones. So. Do you guys have? Anymore. Oh, Mrs. Hell, what is I this um, for Riverside Corporation Health? It says random number 502. Where is it, Carla? It's on Riverside Corporation Health. It just says random. What page are under? Uh, page six of the bill. Thank you. Because that is for transportation, and all bus drivers are, are subject to randoms quarterly. And so that is a fee. Oh, is that I like drug testing? Drug testing. Drug testing. Oh, okay. drug testing. Oh, good. Marla, I just have one on page three um, for Kayla Hughes. Why are there two payments? I'm sorry, for what? Kayla Hughes. Kayla Hughes. The two payments. They're under the same code, so I'm just wondering why were there two. Because it's for two different weeks of... Okay, got it. Consulting. Got it, thank you. <clears throat> Do you have any hand? Oh. Good. Um, on page one, the all right signs for nameplates. Okay, that would be the elementary. You can maybe explain the nameplates. All right signs for nameplates. Um, yeah, we had a couple of, I'm trying to see, I'm trying to remember exactly who they were, but um, door signs for teachers' doors that were either broken or okay. misplaced, like new we're like the new third grade teacher like needed one. Yeah. Yes, okay. exactly. All right. <clears throat> Um, and then um, I know we had previously talked about um, the boiler costs and things like that. Um, so what we're seeing, I think it's page three, <coughs> the boiler and then the boiler feed tank, that's all part of our, what we had previously discussed and set aside. Correct. No new, okay. Correct. Uh, Page five, something about a crossing arm gate. That's for a bus. bus. In the front of the bus, the crossing arm. Oh, the, the crossing arm in front the of the oh, bus. Oh, on the bus. Yeah. Okay, yep. I'm like, where do we have? I a crossing okay. gate? No. And let me see where. <laughs> so Karen. Yeah. Karen, when you when you look at <coughs> when you look at the bills. Yeah. Okay. This this very first number, all the way to the left. Mm -hmm. That's going to give you a clue, an indication as to where that might take place. If you see a 10, mm -hmm. that's out of the education fund. If you see a 20, that's out of the building fund. If you see a 40, it's out of transportation. Okay. I just couldn't figure out where we had an uh, arm gate. A river Which explains crossing. the Riverside <laughs> Health being transportation. Okay. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and I... In thinking that's sure. a, yes, that is it. I need a motion. Make a motion. I'll second. I'll second. Okay. Paul Mazzano? Yes. Goldberg? Yes. Scramenti? Yes. Mazur? Yes. Herman? Yes. Weissel? Yes. Paul? Paul Meyer? Yes. <coughs> Sorry. You poor thing. <laughs> 
Motion carried. All right. Um, <coughs> Mike, you're up. All right. Balance in the Super Now account at First Community at the end of November was two million nine hundred sixty-nine thousand seven ninety-nine fifty. We had checks outstanding of one hundred eighty-eight thousand eight sixty-nine fifteen, leaving the adjusted balance at two million seven hundred eighty thousand nine thirty thirty-five. The lunch program balance was thirty-nine thousand thirty-five dollars and fifty-three cents. Impress fund was five thousand dollars. Even the total balance at two million eight hundred twenty-four thousand nine sixty-five eighty-eight. The investment balances were eleven million six hundred twenty-one thousand six hundred nineteen dollars and fifty-six cents, leaving the balance of all funds at the end of November at fourteen million four hundred forty-six thousand five eighty-five forty-four. November receipts were two hundred eighty-nine thousand nine forty-two seventy-seven. And expenses were one million seven hundred sixty thousand seven ninety two eighty nine. <coughs> the individual fund balances were uh, the education fund nine million one hundred sixty thousand nine sixty five fifty nine, the building fund one million one hundred forty thousand nine oh seven fifty one, bond and interest thirty eight fifty eight ninety six, transportation one million three hundred forty one thousand two fifty ninety five. IMRF 71,603.57. Working cash fund balance two million three hundred fifty-three thousand seven dollars and seventy-nine cents. Tort fund one hundred forty thousand two hundred three seventy-five and life safety two hundred thirty-four thousand seven eighty-seven thirty-two. Interest for the month at First Community was two thousand thirty dollars and thirty-nine cents. And we had just a few distributions from the state. Uh, state aid, 164169.52. Ever popular special milk, $7.61. Driver's education, 2382.23. And just one real estate distribution for 76732.30. The balances are in the packet. And when you see that number for November expenses, if that pops out at you, $1.76 million. <laughs> Keep in mind that in November we paid about three quarters of a million dollars in debt. And so we have old bonds that we're paying off. This year we'll pay in the neighborhood of $1.8 million in principal and interest. Next year that jumps to over two. And so there are a couple times a year where we have really big monthly expenses and that's why. Thank you. Unless anybody has any questions, I make a motion. So moved. Ron seconded. Okay. Goldberg? Yes. Scrimenti? Yes. Missouri? Yes. Herman? Yes. Weissel? Yes. Palmer? Yes. Palmasano? Yes. Motion carried. Very good. And apparently we have the speech team here tonight. I have a um, some other students too that I was going to recognize really quickly before okay. the speech team. All right. Um, ladies, if you'd like to come up here, come on up. Um, for the last few years, we have had a student art contest for our yearbook uh, cover and back. So the winners of that contest, come on up, ladies, are here. And I thought you guys could, um, first of all, which one? Come on over here. Carmela, go ahead and turn around. Face this way, Liliana. <laughs> you guys can say your name and show your picture. All right, Carmela was our front cover winner. So if you want to show your picture, honey. Yeah. Hold it up nice and high. Uh, there we go. And then we are also able to put four pictures on the back. So Carmela's picture was up <coughs> in front of our building, and um, the rest of these ladies have pictures. Um, going along with our school theme this year, Being Kind. So if you want to go ahead and go down the line and say your name and hold up your picture. I'm
Great. Thank you, ladies. Great job. Great job. Mr. Irwin's gone. Who's presenting? I can speak for the speech team. Oh, good. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> My cohort, Ms. Very Baxter, good. had jury duty today, and so she's uh, unable to make it with us. Uh, but um, I'm Mrs. Wendy Sue Wendy. We call well, together um, the speech team for the fifth through eighth graders for the Beecher Junior High and Elementary School. Um, this year we went to contest in New Lenox at, I'm getting the name right, they have like five billion schools, Liberty Junior High School on November 2nd. Um, my team that's here and able to make it, would you come on up to here please, they can be recognized. These taken fifth through eighth graders, it's one of the few things fifth graders can do like the big kids in junior high can do with them and they all are treated equally. Um, our theme was, may the speech be with you this year. Um, overall, this group of kids, earned 24 first place medals. Wow. And two third place ribbons. And Ms. Baxter and I are always happy no matter how they do because they make us proud when they finally learn everything they need to learn and are able to perform in front of a group of people. Um, but we love it when the first outweigh the thirds every time. So it's amazing. I, I don't think we've ever had a year where that hasn't happened so far. So nice job group. Um, we also had, and I saw her here, a student helper this year, like we had the last four hey, years, Melissa Stanovich and Carla Snyder, too, who's not here this year. Too. Uh, as coaches go, we see them come in and we're like, oh boy, like any team. And then they <laughs> outshine us every time when we know what they can do. And um, some of them have a lot of, most of them up here right now, I can agree have a lot of great potential and we have a great young group of kids who are going to be with us again I'm sure next year right guys yeah. so it was great I mean they had a I think they had a good time and we'll see them again next year hopefully about the same time so we thank you for your support to your board very much yeah. great yeah. Melissa, would you like to make a shameless plug for this weekend while you're still standing? Oh, yeah. If you guys want to all support the arts uh, at Rumors, uh, Peter High School is strong. We'll be doing Rumors by Neil Simon at Community Hall this Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Friday at 7, Saturday at 2 and 7, and Sunday again at 2. We should have him perform. That stage was done. We should have him perform. Did everyone hear, or we can repeat it? What? What's that? I said, did everyone in the audience hear? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there more? I think that's it. <laughs> and I see no one wishing to speak. Um, and I'd really like you to stay for a civics lesson, but if you'd like to go, you can. If you have homework to do or something. Something like that. <laughs> Very good student. You sure know how to clear a room. Clear a room. <laughs> <laughs> was it something I said? Yeah, I believe the word was civics. No comment. The woman in the brain. She's one of our actors. I could have. Yeah, she worked for Milestone. Oh, I just noticed the Come on, one Julie. Of, she's one of those, yeah. Get your spot back. <laughs> yeah, we just been around all the time. Like she showed up for the evaluation. 98. 98. 80 would be great. One of her daughters. Yeah, she lives in the best room. Well, that's great. Did you get that on the camera? Did you say roll over there? Um, they want to work really hard. I think Ms. Black has some pictures. Oh, yeah. What? I got a picture of the speech team. I didn't get a picture of I just didn't know if we were getting it on camera. Oh. For them. I have a picture yeah. of the speech team. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay. okay. so um, one of the things that uh, we need to do this time of the year is uh, in October we have the school report card that comes out. And so I know that the, uh, that the building principals queue a lot of... Uh, Standardized test information, once again, standardized test is not a, an end-all be-all of exactly what it is that the data that we collect and who we are, um, but these are numbers that the, that the public sees and we want to make sure that we go through them and that we have an understanding of them. So to start with, what I'll do is I will look at some of the district-wide numbers and take a look at some of the things that, you know, 
might catch your eyes as you thumb through there. So starting with the demographics piece, if you look at um, the Beecher numbers are in orange. And so if you look at the percent of our student population, um, Beecher is 77% white, whereas the state is 48%. Um, black, Beecher is 3%, the state is 17%. Hispanic, Beecher is 18%, the state on average is 26%. Now, it's kind of important to sit here and note and make an important note of this because if you, if you look at non-white, that's more than 20%. Well, that's just a number. Well, of 1,000 kids, 20% of 1,000 kids is 200 kids, okay? That makes it real. That, that, gives, you, that gives you something to think about. And now that's, uh, uh, that's one of the reasons why we need to make sure that in everything that we do, we are being, uh, we are being as diverse as possible, making sure that we're uh, approaching every um, situation from as many viewpoints as possible because we do have a wide variety of students and citizens in our community. We always need to be aware of that. Do you know at what time of year they take that snapshot? So my guess is, once again, these are all ISBE numbers. My guess is they take that off six-day attendance. Okay. That, my guess is that's where they pull those CIS numbers. Um, and once again, this is the, 2000, the fall 2018 report card, which means that it's 1718 data. It's data from the year before. With respect to local property taxes, on average, the average school district gets 63% of their total revenue from local property taxes. We're substantially higher than that. Almost four out of every five dollars that we have in order to educate our kids comes from our local property taxes. Which means that on the other side of that coin, we don't get as much money from the state. The average district gets over 17%, we get 11%. Now all of that brings into the conversation of the new school funding model and where we sit in that. And with the state saying that we are at 75% of our target of what we should be spending on students, that puts us in tier two which means that we are getting some of the new money, but the vast majority is going to tier one. So until tier one gets brought up and all of those schools that are in tier one no longer qualify, we will continue to see a, a little amount of state increase, but not a lot. The new state funding model focuses on those schools that are at 58, 55% of what their target should be. And so as over time, if the state does fund that and there are then no longer any tier one schools, then our allotment should increase as we move through that. But for the foreseeable future, it, it when do they reevaluate? Every year. Yearly? Every year. And they reevaluate according to the amount of money that the general that uh, down of the amount of new money that the general state aid puts into the education formula. So we will have an up, we have an updated figures every summer after the state passes their budget. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. No, no, no. no. <laughs> that was uh, that was only when the governor's house and and the uh, general assembly were at odds. Um, average teacher salary. Um, once again, Beecher uh, being in orange. <coughs> so this puts us about, um, I don't know, about 7 or 8% below what the state average is. Um, same for average administrator's salary, um, about 13% about below what the state average is. When you move into, and once again, these, are, these things are, when you look at expenditures, they're all related. When you look at expenditure per pupil, this focuses on the educational component. And in this instance, we're about 26 or 27 percent below the state average. Do, do we include, if you went back a slide on the average administrator salary, how many people are we including in that? I believe there, I believe, once again, not my data, mm -hmm. but when I tried to reverse engineer that, I think that's four people. 
Okay. I think if so you it's had not a, like if director had, of building and grounds, a director of technology. No. So just your principals and superintendent. Correct. What about director of special ed then? So five people maybe or not? I don't believe so, but I could be. I, I don't know. Once again, it's not okay. my data. Okay. But I don't believe so. About right. So um, instruction, um, instructional expenditure, like I said, that's that's mainly out of the education fund, and that's not all pieces. <coughs> um, this operating expense per pupil, that is, that does include the vast majority of expenditures. I do not believe it includes our debt. Um, and once again, that's based off um, when they say per student, it's not our total enrollment; it's our average daily attendance. So even though over our uh, total enrollment is over a thousand, our average daily attendance is more in the 940 or 950 range. Questions on any of those? Now the operating expenditures includes teacher salaries, uh, building. Uh, the operating expenditures. Electric. Uh, yep. It's going to be. It's going to be buses. It's going to. Yep. Okay. Yep. All of our all of our work <coughs> on buildings. Um, the the main thing that the main expense that we have that you're not going to see there is that long term debt. And as we just discussed a minute ago, that's pretty substantial for us. Mm -hmm. Is that long term debt supposed to come off the books here? Uh, in a couple of years. I think mm. me, and, me and Mr. McCartney had spoke about that. I think it's. Like I think our last. I've already. I think I've already put that in the board um, report. I think the last payment is in twenty one. Ish. I'm going to go with ish. Yeah. 2021 ish, give or take. So it, so that is coming, and as we move towards that, there are lots of conversations that we need to have. And we're still at nine million debt, but we are not allowed to go over the 19 million. That's our total maximum. So your total maximum debt is based on your EAV. Um, it's about 13 or 14 percent of your total EAV. Um, so our current EAV is in the neighborhood of 150 million. So 13% of that, yeah, is gonna be about 19, 19 or 20 million dollars. Which we're not anywhere close to. Right, we're at nine. Any questions? The only other thing I, that I wanted to touch on is something that um, I've alluded to. Um, I'm not. I'm honestly not for sure how we're going to move forward with our with our IT department. Um, we are currently at two, and we have two employees who are doing a great job, working a ton of hours, working a ton of overtime to make sure that. Um, we continue to be able to, when, when people log on, everything works. You know, rule number three, things have to work. And uh, they're, they're putting in a ton of hours and they're not getting to anything other than keep, keeping a, our heads above water. And when we just advertised for a replacement to get that third person in, um, we literally had zero people who would come in and even have an interview. And, um, and so, I'm sure it's a function of I'm sure it's a function of salary. I'm sure it's a function of where we are in the IT world, um, and so that's that's something that we need to get fixed mm -hmm. pretty quickly, pretty quickly, because we want to make sure that the people that we have are doing a great job, and we don't want to, we don't want to overwork them to the point where they say, "Look, right." Did you think of the people that? just applied three months ago and even a year and a half ago and we added that one? Yep. You got it. Yeah, I had a conversation with one of our IT guys today and he was giving me some ideas on salaries and what would, you know, you're, you're so talking 15, 20 I think an hour it's, easy. Yeah, it's heavy. But, um, yeah. we're, and we're kind of, we're budgeted too for three. Three. Not we are. salary, but yeah. We are. That's, that's, that's what we've had in so the room to grow there too. Okay. Yes. Have you contacted uh, Governor State or uh, Prairie State? Certainly, to certainly, and we do have um, uh, a uh, what's the word? Somebody who's coming in. They're working for free. Intern. 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 There we go. <laughs> um, we have an intern who's coming in uh, shortly, and I believe we have an intern lined up for second semester. Um, they only have so many hours, and 
you know, they spend the first half of their time kind of learning what, where we are, and then we get, you know, quite a bit of really good work out of them, and as soon as they really get really good, then they, you know, have finished their internship and they're off and running. So just know that that's something that's of paramount importance here really quick. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Randy. I don't know. Who's next? Mr. Meyer. Mr. Meyer? Uh, so there are our last two years in terms of our Illinois science assessment. Uh, I think actually we've taken it for three years and then the first year data, I don't know if it ever came, and then the 2017 just came, like 17, 18 came within a couple weeks of each other if I remember correctly. So I would love to say, you know, I guess we start out on a high. Um, in terms of our science scores, and I want to say this is because of our, our teachers and this is because of our curriculum and, and all that, I know it sure helps, but I believe the fact that the kids obviously have to take the tests, and so you're going to see some other scores that aren't that good, um, but I mean, it's a combination of everything. Um, I truly believe what also helps is the fact that this Illinois science assessment is an hour compared to maybe park being three days and nine hours and 30 minutes and, and whatever. Um, but I'm really pleased, the science teachers are pleased <coughs> with that particular data. So um, we've, we've done a nice job there. Overall, our park scores, ELA at the left, math scores at the right, our pie charts. Um, I'll come back to this a little bit later when I compare um, our schools, but it looks like uh, on the left, our ELA score is 46%, or sorry, yeah, 46% meet and exceed, um, and our math is 25. Like I said, I will come back to some of those uh, points. Sixth grade park scores, again, ELA at the left, math at the right. Uh, we have nobody in ELA in terms of exceeding. Uh, we had about 34% looking at the four. Um, you look at the, the right with the math scores, um, one person, 23 people, um, approximately within the meeting and exceeding. In terms of sixth grade, our the state score overall is a 736. Uh, Beecher Junior High School is a 735. So we are, in terms of ELA, um, we're right at the state average. Um, in terms of math, the state score is 730, and we are 728 in terms of sixth grade. So again, the numbers, you know, we need to improve those uh, along the lines in, in both areas if, if possible, uh, but we are ahead in, in um, I, I shouldn't say that, we are one behind in ELA and we are two behind in math. Seventh grade, a little bit more of a, a nice bell curve in terms of the ELA on the left. Um, again, nobody in math in terms of exceeding. Seventh grade average of the state is 738 in English. We are 741, so we are a little bit ahead of the state. In math, 734 is the state score. We are at 729, so we are six points lower in terms of math. One of the things that we've talked about in terms of our seventh grade math is sixth grade is taught by one teacher, Mr. Hilger. Seventh grade is a combination with Hilger and Fan, and eighth grade is... Mrs. Pham. Doesn't make it right, it's just a point that, you know, the consistency piece, you know, yes, we're supposed to teach the same standards, um, but it's, it's not ideal, but I, uh, we've got some improvements to make, but that's, I, that's just a point I want to throw out there. Doesn't make it right or wrong, we still have to teach the standards, um, but that's one of the consistency things that, uh, that we see within our math program. When were these taken again? This is 1718, so last spring. Okay, so this is before the this new was, math program. Correct, we just started yes. the math program okay. now. Correct. Eighth grade. Okay. Just want to uh, make sure. Yes. Yeah. Eighth grade average for state and ELA is 736. We are 759. So this is the one that we do a, we're, we're I don't want to say well above because that's not true either, but we're doing a very nice job of a combination of sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, putting it all together. Um, and our eighth grade teachers deserve a lot of credit. Our, our eighth grade English teachers deserve a lot of credit. Uh, math, state is 729, and we are 733. So our eighth grade 
performed well in terms of we were above the state. And actually, we have one person in, in eighth grade last year um, that did well, that exceeded. You know, our, we look at our, our four and fives in ELA. Um, you know, though this, this by far is the, the best chart. Can I just keep it here? Is that okay? <laughs> uh, but, but no, they, I mean, it's, it's, again, it's a culmination of everybody doing well. Um, but our eighth grade last year, again, some of them exceeded. And again, it, it depends on, you know, it, it depends on the kids. It depends on the effort level, obviously. But our teachers try our curriculum. You know, we'll get that, we'll get that squared away as well. Okay, now coming back to um, that first, kind of that first pie chart. So this is an area comparison. This is ELA comparison to our conference schools. So if you look at it, again, I know it's, 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 it's not in order, but the state average in ELA is, uh, where are we at, 37. So at 37, we have one, two, three, four, we have five schools in our conference that are above state average in 37. Piatone is the best at 56, Grant Park, Limestone, Beecher, which usually we fall into about four or five in every category since I've been here the past seven years. So we're right in about the middle of the conference, good, bad, or indifferent. So one, two, three, four, so five schools above the state average. Um, again, if that's good, bad, indifferent, uh, but that's kind of where we are. Math. One of the things about math, and I know our scores aren't ideal, but the math state average is 32. There are only three schools in our conference or in our area that either are 32 or above. So you have Grant Park, you have Limestone, and Piatone is 32. Everybody else is below the state average. So then I say, you know, we've got to do better, but our area, you know, also uh, maybe needs to do a little bit better. But I, I, I feel a little, I, mean, I shouldn't say I feel a little bit better, but when I look at some of our top-notch schools in the area, you know, we're all about the same. Uh, Grant Park is, 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 is always doing well. Um, and I know they've got some small classes and I know they've got some, they've got some real good dynamics down there uh, in terms of when, when we talk about it, our Canwell meetings. And so, you know, maybe we can figure out something um, along the lines of, of what they're doing. But I think when we go to the next slide and we talk about kind of what we need to do I think first and foremost, what we get sometimes, what I get caught up in is, oh my gosh, you know, look at this, we're horrible in literary, you know, or we're, or we're really doing well in vocabulary. So we, we flip and we jump and, we, and we, we overreact possibly, and again, that's my word, not anybody else's. I just hope our big picture here by aligning math and aligning the ELA in terms of more consistency within the elementary and the junior high since we are doing uh, the same park scores or the same park test which is going to be called what the Illinois assessment of readiness I believe is the new word um, I think that is going to help so the consistent balance of those things and not overreacting again the go math series I think looking at uh, hopefully it's going to eliminate and in, in the consistency between buildings one of the, the our teachers talked about more online assessment practice we think coming with the one-to-one, -one, coming with more, hopefully with more Chromebooks that are up to speed, we can practice more. Because if you use it three, four, what, five times a year doing some of these practice tests or doing the online testing, you know, that we're not going to be proficient at it. So the more times we practice, the more times we do it, hopefully that's going to get better. But one of the things that I like from Mr. Hilger, he said, we have to use paper. And I'm like, they're online tests. He's like, but I know. But you can't do all that stuff online. You need a piece of paper. You need to work it out. You need to do all this stuff. And you have to make the kids focus on that because they want to just say, oh my gosh, A, I'm not doing all that work. I'm not doing all that. And so if, if Mr. Mr. Hilger and Mrs. Fan talked about just you know, doing the work on a piece of paper and then apply it to, your, um, to the online assessment to get the answer instead of just <laughs> trying to guess or use this calculator maybe. On, and I, I know the calculator is important, but it's kind of a, a basic calculator. Um, but do the work on paper first and then try to uh, transfer it back online. So that was one of the things that he talked about. And then we need some, and I said specifically, give me an area. And he talked about word problems, focusing on the response and the reasoning of it, not just the answer. How do you get there? What do you do? Explain it. He thought that's what we need to work on as well. ELA, our textbook committee is working um, very diligently at that. This is going to, um, uh, this might be a little bit more difficult than the math series, but we're, we're going we're gonna to work on it. We're going to get this thing right and we're going to get the consistency that we need. And then 
what I found in terms of sixth and seventh grade, it looked like our writing expression and our writing conventions needed to be, I mean, that's one of the best things in our eighth grade, and if that's what the high school is looking at, if that's what we choose to really focus in on would be the writing aspect in sixth and seventh grade to lead into eighth grade to lead into high school. So we've got this right to learn that I think I brought to you, or actually Mrs. Schrader wrote up the article in September, I think when we talked about our ELA. She really likes this, this could be a high school thing. The five day, five a day language is kind of like the DOLs, we used to do the DOLs, now sixth and seventh grade still do DOLs, but our eighth graders, our, our eighth grade teachers are doing this five a day, which it hits the 10 writing standards. So I think, all that stuff put together has really helped our writing, but we have to decide where our focus is going to be. Sorry. Do we have anything, I, I guess I can tell you as a parent, I don't know that mm -hmm. I see it, but something, and by the way, when I ask this, I'm more saying, what do you need? <laughs> no, that's sure. it, they're like slamming on sure. you. Something that actually is keeping track as the year goes on. You know, something like a math test that says, this is where you were in September, this is where we are in January, where are you going to be before there? I mean, cause I think as a parent, I don't recall that I get something that says, just this is where your kids were in September. Be star and now. is what we have. We do the star in the beginning of the year. We do star second in January, and then we do it at the end of the year. Those now, but I don't think we send them home. I don't, I don't believe we do. Okay. Now, maybe the elementary does, but I don't believe we do. Now, our teachers would have that information okay. if you wanted to talk to Mrs. Stein. She would have that information for you, but okay, so we don't we do send it home. Something. We do, okay. but we don't send it home. That's what they work off of. Okay. Yes. Well, that might be good too. And some of that, I mean, just they communicate to the parents like Mike John is doing great, but then you don't realize they are. You know, comparing it to the national, comparing it to the school, mm -hmm. like you may think he's doing great, and you find out he's in the bottom ten percent of your grade. Well, you know, do your homework. You know that kind True. of thing. So, okay, yes, sir. I looked at this too a couple weeks ago. I haven't looked at it since the report card. And one of the things that I noticed was some of our um, minutes in certain grade levels was lower than the state average and then I thought back to a couple of years ago we did that whole revamping of all of the um, schedules mm -hmm. and it, it was never what I wanted. I always wanted a well at the end of the day. Students were leaving early and I always wanted at the end of the day and then I don't even think it was you, I think it was Mr. McCartney and Mr. Schilling just took the lead and everybody else kind of followed along and now I look at the report card and I'm like oh our minutes aren't as high as some of the state average, especially in math. So I was wondering. I'm well, we have 46 minutes. I don't want the average. Those are our classes. Or they were, I think it was a little bit higher in Is some it? of the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it worked in the grade level too. So I, I don't and know. If that's something to look at, but I know it's a big thing to change it. But I hated when we put AOL in the middle of the day. I, I liked it at the end. I thought it was good when they were leaving. That and was then, the high school. So now we've always had it in the middle of the day because that's when band and our chorus can only meet because we have the traveling right. teachers. So mm -hmm. that's what we have in the middle yep. of the day. But I know we used to have block English, and I think that really helped our scores, but now we had to switch. Now we still have two classes, now we have reading in English, um, right. but we don't have the same teachers teach. You may have English in the morning, and then you may have, um, or sorry, language arts in the morning, but you may have reading with a different teacher, but it's not the blocked 90 yeah. minutes, so it's 45 and 45 to, about, I didn't to make it work. To look at the numbers or anything. Okay. I Do you feel like the that. star breaks down the various components? You know, your your inferencing versus your drawing conclusion mm -hmm. vocabulary. Yeah, I mean it's all, STAR has a ton of different reports, so it's all in how we, um, how in depth we go with those report, reports. Um, at least at my building, we basically use STAR as um, a universal screener. So it's kind of our first place where we start, um, look at the kids that are in red and yellow, and <coughs> you know, take it from there. I just, quick question. Uh, when, like you said, I see the scores, and you know, and that, that tells me that some kids that, you know, there's there's students that uh, overachieve, achieve, and underachieve. When are we looking at the ones that are maybe not getting it and uh, and putting in some kind of intervention there? And that's what we're talking about with Title IV money. We're looking at this freckle, which is kind of a K-12 differentiation um, framework. I, now, I've never used it. I know Mrs. Um, Black has. She's going to... I think walk me through this if that's a if that is a possibility. <coughs> the other thing, having the Chromebooks and having access to that, and hopefully finding another aid because initially we were going to have something like that. Now we're down to three, and so Mrs. Cleary is working by herself for um, basically both lunch periods, both study halls to try to get our help in that particular dynamic or that group. Um, but if we can get another one and we can break it down into math and ELA, that was the goal initially. Um, but yes, freckle is what I'm looking at. I, yeah, because I think if you have some program that, you bet. that 
identifies that Absolutely. struggling child, I think. With the red and yellow from our star, whatever we choose, yes, I, I would totally agree, sir. And kind of a, a jump on what Rod's saying there is we're small enough that every child is one to one and a half percentage points. You know, yeah. <laughs> so it's you to bet. go up mm -hmm. three percentage right. points. Yeah, boost. Is and, everybody yeah. reaching one more student a little more? And I agree, yeah. and, and if we can get him properly problems. motivated to right. take it seriously yeah. and do it, I think it'd even be better. I just think that we, I, I yeah, I, anywhere. It doesn't matter. Everybody has the same test. But I think the proper motivation, and I think the one to, I think is key for us at the junior high. That's, I think that's one of the battles that we fight. That I feel that we fight. It may just be my opinion. Because I, I feel when they struggle, and if they're not getting it, then they just give up. Absolutely. They'll bail. And I think that's one of the most difficult parts about an online math test and not a paper and pencil math test is there is a lot of things you have to do, and and there's a lot of, they don't want to do all that. It's now, maybe on a piece of paper they might, but now i got to go back to different screens. I have to mani manipulate this and this. Those are just some um, responses that I'm getting sure. from my teachers. It, it's sure. Those tests sometimes are but everybody else has to do it. There's no excuses. But I know there's, no, there's, not, there's some kids that are not good test takers. Have we ever thought about looking at it that way to see how they can maybe become a better test taker? Or practice. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, I mean, it's online, like mm -hmm. you said. Yeah. Sure. Perform like the graphic. Trying. Things, We're trying. I've often wondered but about whether accommodations, were you fully using those and oh, like yeah. they I think so. Yeah. I think so. And then the small, yeah, and moving, yes, and then different groups and, and small, different smaller and at groups. And the high school level, I mean, like taking the SAT, and I mean, students are just can be eligible for time and a half. That, that'd be so helpful. I know for my own daughter, I'm like, wow, you could have spent and you've been a part of small two groups hours on that math test so. as opposed yeah. to. I mean, I think we, we follow the law and we do what we're supposed to. Because you can only test these kids so much. Excuse me. And then we, that's a lot of it as well. the improvement. We have a lot of tests yes, that we take to it. Mm -hmm. yeah, but you just can't. Right, wrong, and different. Right. 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 The title question yeah, is sure. more for you and I will just you spot. But I remember on the report card when I was looking at the very first page that oh, eligible picture. for title, oh, one of the numbers, <coughs> and it didn't, and it said, but not incorporating or something like that. You know what I, mean, no, I, don't, I don't know what that means. Um, historically and currently, we are not, we're not a school that receives a lot of federal money. Uh -huh. Right. And so, yes, we do get some title funds, but they're fairly limited. Because it said they were, we were eligible, but we weren't using them or something? I mean, you know, we've got, a, we've got a, what, $13 million budget, and I think all of our title grants together are a little over $100,000. We definitely use all the title money that we get. There's different ways you can be classified as title, like we're a targeted assistance school. Uh -huh. Schools that have um, more prevalent um, title needs are like every student is eligible for title services. In our school, we don't have that. So we right. have to, we have to um, decide the, the students that are in our programs a little bit differently. So that might be the different wording that you were reading, because yeah, there are two different I types of title that. programs. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Next. Okay. <laughs> yes. I'm wondering if the parents provide any interventions. Okay. All right. This is no. Our presentations are fairly similar. We have the same test that we take, so. Thank you, by the way. Obviously. Um, our testing is a little bit different at our school, so I just wanted to break down what that looks like. Um, past school year, 17-18, our third and fourth graders tested on paper and pencil. Our fifth graders tested on Chromebooks. And then for the Illinois Science Assessment, fifth graders take that test, and that was um, tested on Chromebooks. The main reason that we do that is because we only have Chromebooks last year, only had Chromebooks for our fifth graders. I didn't feel like it was fair to test our third and fourth graders on a device when it was the first time they had that device right. for the test. So um, a little bit different than um, how they do that at Mr. Meyer's school. So I just wanted to point that out. Which they do better on paper pencil. Hmm? Don't they often do better on paper pencil? Yes, I they do agree. often do better yeah, on, I would on agree. paper I would agree with that. <laughs> as well. So um, Illinois Science Assessment. Again, we have taken it for three years, although we've only been given two years of data. Um, the state average 49 percent, or excuse me, 51 uh, percent in 2017 were meeting or exceeding. Our school had 49 percent. 2018, 51 again was the state average, and our school had 58 percent of students meeting or exceeding on the science assessment. Um, again, this is looking overall 
at our numbers and my one is cut off there. Um, so um, this is looking at overall. So it has the um, third, fourth, and fifth grade scores all together in there. Um, so in ELA, we have 14% of our students that are exceeding expectations and 48% of our students are meeting expectations. Um, and then the three, two, one um, kind of go down from there. For math, we had 1% of our students above the state um, um, standards, and we have 37% meeting the state standards. Looking at third grade, um, a lot of times when they group together parts, park scores, I broke them down so you could see all of them, um, but for the most part, um, we look at those students that are in that four and five range, and that's kind of where we're um, trying to be. That's our goal is to get students to that four range. So oh, five is to the left. Five is all the way to the left. Oh, okay, not yes. one. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, five is all the way to the left. Okay. Um, so for ELA in third grade, we have 61% of our students, excuse me, 60% of our students who are at that four or five um, area. And then for math, we have 30%. Um, and kind of like uh, Mr. Meyer alluded to, um, park scores overall, um, even when you look at state average, um, national average, the math is a lot lower than ELA. So I don't know if that's just um, the test is more difficult or I, you know, I don't know what park does as far as um, making changes or looking at, you know, adjusting the test. Because the first time you give the park test, it's kind of, you know, their first, their best first try. And they definitely make um, changes to the test as it goes. But the math test across all states is definitely the area where schools score lower. Well, so much of the delivery of the math curriculum has changed. And it changed quite quickly. Absolutely. And there were those huge, big bubbles where I would agree. whether it's literacy, sure. reading, English, ELA. No. no. Not change so much. I would, I would definitely agree with that. I mean, when, when the Common Core Standards came out, it definitely is a different level of rigor for ELA, and you're adding more nonfiction text, but the kids were always reading nonfiction text in science and social studies. They're looking at it in a different way, um, but math changed <coughs> drastically mm -hmm. the expectations on, mm -hmm. at different grade levels, and it takes a while to fill those gaps and, and, and adjust to that different level and of it, And it seems like what was in eighth grade, now everybody needs it in seventh grade. So it's like it's a whole year ahead mm -hmm. of kind of where Absolutely. things used to be. So Absolutely. And it keeps going down, Correct. down, right. down. <laughs> um, our fourth grade scores from last year, um, our ELA scores look phenomenal. Um, our uh, number of students in that four and five range is really great. Um, looking at our math scores, um, we didn't have anyone exceeding, and um, we have 28% of our students that are at that meeting level for fourth grade. Fifth grade, and again, I kind of have up there just, you know, these are last year scores, so these are current sixth graders that are um, at the junior high now. For ELA, there are 43% of the students that are hitting that four and five mark, and for math, we have 28% of students doing that. So here's our... Um, same schools, Mr. And Mr. Meyer and I kind of got together to make sure that we were comparing to the same schools. Um, if you're looking just at the bar graph too, um, and, this, and the next one, Beecher is the first school, listed all the way on the left. So um, for us, the state average for ELA scores is 37%. Ours was 52% of students hitting that four or five mark. And um, the only school in our area that scored higher than us was Grant Park. Only 3%, though. <laughs> really <laughs> close. <laughs> At the junior high level, Piaton was so much higher. Yes. They were. They are, in That's both math true. and yeah. ELA. They, they were. Yeah. I don't know. Um, and then, something, I guess. Yeah, and then, too, you know, with Piaton, when I was looking at um, comparing scores, um, they have third grade <clears throat> in one building, they have a 1, 2, 3, or mm -hmm. a K 1, 2, 3 building, and then they have 4 and 5 in a separate building. So I don't know if they're. Um, you know, instructor or books and all that kind of yeah. stuff is the same because it's a different building for testing across. But I wonder why the big improvement from them to the junior high. Because yeah. those numbers right now, they're cut in half. Mm -hmm. Yep. And speaking of Piatone, remember, remember a big thank you to uh, to all the good folks at Piatone who recently <laughs> hosted 
a large number of our all of our, 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 our map. Sorry. At the end. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Uh, uh, Mrs. Black, do you know, I know there's I'm kids, sorry. I think, still in high school who have never gotten a park test, right? Oh, definitely. So, like, in our fifth graders that you have now, how many years have they been exposed um, to? Well, third grade. They started in third grade. Okay, that's, so that's the first year they've already test. had it? What? Three years they've already had it then? Well, the current fifth graders, this will be their third, third, third year. year. Okay. Yes. All right. This is yeah. who is a year behind. And okay. This. All right. And the first year you park test is third grade. So our fifth okay. graders have park tested in third grade and fourth grade. So this year will be the third time you're taking okay. that assessment. All right. Um, math scores. The state average for math scores was 32%. Um, our school was at 38%. And again, Grant Park was the only school that beat us. A um, little bit more this time, um, but again, you know, we understood that math was an area of concern for us, which is why we focused on that first when we were looking at um, what we were going to do to um, fill those gaps. So what we're doing to improve scores, um, as far as RTI, which kind of starts, um, is where I'm looking to improve in, um, instruction and interventions with students. Um, this year, we've um, really spent some time looking at midpoint data. So we uh, benchmark test students at the beginning of the year, middle of the year, the end of the year. Um, this year we just had a meeting last two weeks ago um, where all of those students that we had identified from our first benchmark meeting that we were giving um, interventions to, we um, progress monitored them, ran a new report, a new STAR report, saw who went up, who went down, if we needed to adjust their programming, how things were going in the middle and not waiting till January to kind of get a new look at them. So I think that's really helpful to our program and just make sure that yes, we're on the right track, this is working, or if it's not working, we're gonna add something else, we're gonna switch up the program, see what we need to do in between. Were you also using the spring data more this year or not? Um, some, I is mean, we use, we, we always use the spring data. I know that um, Mrs. Openheis uses that a lot too, to um, kind of, go through and see who she's going to start testing for special reading. So she does use that. Um, teachers have that spring data available to them um, to start making some of their flex groups in their classroom before we get that first um, benchmarking yeah. data in. So okay. yeah, we, we do look at it. Teachers have that available to them because um, okay. they're using it in the classroom. And can I ask, are the interventions push in or pull out or combo of both? Um, well. One of the first, the, one of the biggest interventions that we use for reading is special reading teachers. So that's okay. a pull-out program. Um, we do have other reading programs that... Um, Wait, what so do you call the program? Special reading. Our special reading, what Mrs. Openheis says with her students. What, program, what program are they using? She uses a plethora of different programs in there, depending on the needs of the students. She has a lot of different programs okay. that she uses with them. Um, and then students who are not title students, um, we have a lot of different things available. We do some of them in the classroom. Um, some of them aides um, will push in when we do um, some six minute solution if we're, we're working with kids. Sometimes if it's a computer program, they'll go to the computer lab. Oh, Sometimes okay. teachers are doing that in their classroom. So it's really just a mix and it depends right. on what the need of that group is. Um, and again, we're constantly examining our RTI program, interventions, adding programming as needed. When we were looking at, um, at our last midpoint meeting, we were talking about wanting to um, get a new math um, intervention piece. We have some things in place, but we realize that that's an area of need, so that's something we're going to look at as an RTI team, see what's out there, research, try some things, um, so we find what we like. Um, for ELA, our three, four, five uh, teachers have really been spending a lot of time planning together to align curriculum, assessment, and uh, share instructional strategies across the board. Um, they went to some trainings uh, toward the end of last year. They worked together over the summer. They've also been working and planning together to make sure that that full range of the Common Core standards are being taught and mastered um, across those three grades. Um, our ELA textbook committee is meeting and discussing um, what this department needs and how to move um, consistently among the grade levels. So again, we've had quite a few good conversations um, with more to come, more for them to look at. Uh, math, obviously we have a new math series that we've adopted. 
uh, with more rigor and hopefully um, a little bit more alignment to the Common Core standards than what we have had before. Um, in my building, um, K-5 teachers are really working on having guided math in their classrooms so they're meeting with small groups of math students every day um, instead of just having whole group instruction. So they're having that whole group instruction and then having small group instruction every day with students. Um, and teachers are observing colleagues for strategies and best practices. So in Peak Tone, um, they also adopted Go Math. So our teachers, and, um, along with getting the um, training at the beginning of the year um, from the Go Math people, you know, it's really easy, or it's really hard to just listen to what somebody has to mm -hmm. say about it, to as it. opposed to they putting it into practice. So they were able to go on our Institute Day. Uh, December 3rd, they were able to go, and uh, Mr. Meyer's teachers as well, um, were able to go and observe Go Math being taught in the classrooms. And I think we had some really great feedback on that. Um, Piatone really opened you know, their doors and invited us in. Um, they loved it. They were asking if they could come and observe and do, you know, see some of the things that we're doing. And I think it's really great just to open up that partnership with area schools, even if it's not just focused on math, just some best practices that are happening and giving the teachers the chance to talk, you know, and, and um, bounce ideas off of each other. Mm -hmm. so. Berkeley still wants to come out the science program in January. They'll be calling. Um, and I think, yeah, that's all I have. Okay. Thank Good you. Job. Thank, Thank you. you. Good job. Yeah. <coughs> that's the last. <laughs> You gotta make that bigger. These lights are brighter. There's a plethora. There's a plethora of them. Nice tie. I know. My wife got it. Oh, there you go. Wow. Oh, jeez. Kind of committed now, aren't I? Jealous. Who's making? Who's making? I'm sure Mr. Meyer would wear. I think the the male board members would love one too. I know a guy. Who might help you. <laughs> uh, so, I feel like it's me. Uh, obviously, we're going to do 17 to 18 data. Um, one of the things that I I don't like about a lot of things when it comes to education is inconsistency. And one of the biggest inconsistent pieces to the data you're about to see is the numbers that College Board presents to our students of meets and exceeds, and the number the State Board tells us is meets and exceeds. What I mean by that is if you are in college board, your ELA has to be 480 to meet and exceed and it has to be 510 in math. If you are Illinois State Board, it's 540 on both. So the numbers you're going to see are significantly different than what you would pull up on college board or your results from there. Um, some, of the, some of them up to 30%. So what I did is obviously I don't have different grades, I have my 11th graders which are now seniors. So what we did is we simply did a uh, comparison across our neighboring areas. Uh, so there's our ELA standards, we're about 38%. State average is just over 40, it's 41%. Um, Cremoni is below us and there's that Grant Park, Piatone, um, they are above us. We have to figure what Grant Park's doing. <laughs> we should stop they down down expanded there. like we had. Mm -hmm. Uh, math results, just like every other uh, presentation you saw, our math results are lower. Uh, the state average there is about 37%. We are at about 27 at our, uh, for our seniors, our 11th graders taking it last year. Uh, Grant Park, again, is at 39%, the highest. Uh, my problem with any kind of data, I look at this, when the state average is 38%, I don't think it's the kids. I think there has to be a realistic expectation from the state to look back at actually what they're assessing our students on because it's not fair that the state for elementary is at 32% and junior high is at 31% and our state's at 38% for high school. That's not kids. That's something a lot deeper, but we're doing what we can with what we have. So that last year's numbers are right there for our, our kids. Our science assessment, now this does not, I know we have that new science program, this is not that group of students yet. So this is still the uh, the last group that came through without the new science program that I know uh, a lot of our teachers have been raving about. And look at there, Grand Park sucks at science. <laughs> 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 uh, State, well, yeah, finally. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but there's Pia, Pia Jones, uh, yeah. is still above us. Again, the state average is relatively high. 
I'm really interested in next year looking at this number with that new with that new math. I'm sorry, with that new science uh, group to come through to see where that number goes because both of your Hopefully. guys' numbers shot up Hopefully. as well. Um, graduation rate, gradu yeah, yeah, that yeah. graduation <laughs> rate. Uh, to me, this is probably the most important number as a high school principal that I'm going to present um, because this is showing that our kids are moving past us and they're getting what they need while they're with us. Um, so last year we were at 93 uh, percent. Uh, Grand Park was at 98 percent, and the state average, 86. That's for four years. That's for four years. That's students who graduate. Get yeah, that word. I can't see. Why can't I see graduate? Uh, <laughs> I, I'm proud of myself. <laughs> uh, the graduation so. rate is. I can't say it now either. It's really related to what you slash we decide. I mean, like whatever district decides. Correct. If we say this is passing, if we say this is what you get an A for, this is what you get a B, I mean, whatever the teachers decide when you're doing it, Correct. it's a little subjective. It's, it's the amount of kids who meet the credit requirements for to walk across the stage. So if we were to, now there's obviously sort of some state, uh, state mandates that you have to match, but if we say, you know, the state mandate is 18 credits, but we're at 24 and a kid has 23, they're retaking a course and they, they have not passed. Um, so I'm, true. Um, I'm doubting Ground Park is in that boat. I'm, I'm guessing that they're, because you've already seen all their other data. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. uh, so here's the two-year comparison for everything for us. Um, the blue is two years ago. Uh, the orange is last year. Even though it says 17 and 18, I, I don't know why I did that. It's just it's felt fun. Our ELA has dropped, our math has dropped, our science has dropped, and our graduation, great, there's that word again, has risen. Um, again, why? It's different kids. Um, I think Mr. Palmasano pointed out two or three kids is two or three percent for our for, for our community. So if we have two or three kids who don't do as well, it's six to nine percent lower. And so when you're looking at data like this, um, that's not saying we had a huge dip in our expectations of our students. We're not saying our students were worse. We're saying that we had maybe had a threshold where a few kids didn't meet that expectation, that arbitrary expectation that the state has put on upon put upon our students. Um, Again, so next year when we look at this, um, you know, we'll, we'll throw a third number up next to that. Uh, my personal goal is that final one, at some point in time, will be at 100%. That's my personal goal as the uh, high school principal because to me, that's the important number. Um, that's the number I want to be able to celebrate. Math, science, ELA, it's fantastic because the state's telling us in. <laughs> but our kids walking out of our door with something, that's the important thing for us. Uh, some of the things we're doing uh, currently and looking to do. Uh, we right now are using Khan Academy and AOLs for uh, SAT prep. They did that last year. They're going to do it again this year. <coughs> Excuse me. I've jumped down to uh, three more from there. Um, one of the things I'm having some of my 11th grade teachers do, uh, we, have, we have licenses for Albert.io. Uh, Albert.io is the AP prep uh, program that we have. We have 66 licenses across um, the high school, and it's only for the kids who are in AP. They actually have a component for SAT prep. Um, and so in my communication with my representative from Albert, um, I said, can I, is it open for kids who take AP World, um, uh, AP US History, can they also take the SAT prep? And they said, absolutely. Your license is a child's seat. Whatever test you want to give them, whatever preparation you want to give them. So we're looking at seeing if that Question. is a little bit more beneficial to our students using the SAT. Again, that's not, Khan Academy is free. Right. But if I'm not seeing results, and, and Albert.io is going to give me some sort of results, um, that's something I might look into going to in the future with that. Uh, we're doing our vertical alignment of curriculum K through 12. Um, every one of our institute meeting uh, uh, days has been phenomenal. We have, I just had a eighth grade ELA teacher in with my high school teachers um, talking about what they're doing in eighth grade, what they're doing in high school, and where they can start bridging those gaps. Um, <clears throat> New programs for test, uh, test preparation. Again, um, what is out there? What do we have? The Albert, um, the, the Khan Academy, what else can we look to hopefully get for free? Um, but when we start adopting our programs for our, uh, textbook adoption, those things, you know, what does that come with? What do those look like? Um, update. Uh, staff has been doing a great job getting me curriculum maps, uh, reviewing those kind of things, and making sure they're bridging the Common Core to the college readiness standards. Um, it's going to be really silly that once they're done with eighth grade, Common Core is done, all right, we don't care anymore. Now we're on the college readiness standards. There has to be some kind of uh, bridge in there. So, again, that, that building between Mr. Meyer's building and mine uh, is being significant. Uh, continue to monitor that science program. And then, lastly, um, 
we're hoping to get this before the next semester. Um, shockingly, the state's kind of dragging their feet. Uh, but with the Title IV funds, we're looking to buy with a credit recovery program. It's called Edgenuity. And what it's going to do is any student who does not, um, for that gradu graduation rate, <laughs> nailed it, uh, if they are lacking a math algebra, we, we can put them in their AOL and they can actually sign on. We're, by, we're going to get 10 seats and they can actually take a online class to get compensated for that credit. So uh, right now we're using American School. It's costing them, um, I know the number, of, I think it's like 500 for them to take American School. I could be wrong. But it's, again, it's, they get the stuff. Is that a Lansing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they send it in. This is going to be a program that is completely online. The staff can uh, monitor it. They do it at their pace, and once they're done, they have that credit rolled back into it. Um, so that's something we're hoping to do for that graduation. To get it. Um, the other thing, uh, it's not on here, Miss Black made me remember. Um, <coughs> I know, <laughs> fond memories of me and Miss Black. Um, so she and Mr. Meyer sent people over to Piatone. Uh, the high school, we're not doing that. However, uh, tomorrow will be the third day that we do it. Um, I hire a sub. And then I assign teachers to go and watch somebody else teach. So, for instance, Miss Payne is going to go watch Mr. Smolson. Well, they don't teach the same content, no, but they watch each other teach. You learn from each other. You learn, um, you know, how you interact with students, how classroom management works. And then they have a, a conversation at the end of that. Um, it is not administrative driven. I do not want to know what they saw because it's not part of the evaluation. I just want them to have that open dialogue. Uh, the first two went really well, they raved about it, so we're going to do it again. And then my hope is, starting the second semester, we're actually going to send some teachers down to the junior high, junior high come up to the high school so they can watch uh, where their kids are and where the kids are coming from. So, big fan of that. Just a quick question. Yeah. I, I, we Grant Park, uh, I see that their, their scores are high, the numbers are numbers, but have we ever reached out to see what maybe they're doing that we could incorporate here? I have not because oh, I saw all this data about two weeks ago, so <laughs> um, uh, I, I we have principals meetings, so that's one of the things that's going to be uh, talked about. Is you know why why? Thank you. I, I know one thing I've I've often heard that I I don't know if there's any validity to this or not is that you know in Beecher we had this period of, of growth. You know we added subdivisions, kind of moved up, sure. and that Grant Park didn't have that same stretch. So the students you have in high school are the same students you had K through eight. You know. In, We've, we've gradually moved and we've added students and it's come, you know, until the, as the town got bigger, you, were, you're, you're moving over, you're starting up, you know, and you're, you're redoing, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. So when we, when we talk about a couple of the, of the culture pieces, one of the things that you've heard from me a few times is about breaking down the walls, about teachers engaging each other in the, about what they do in the classroom, which is a really hard thing for us to do. And you're seeing evidence of that. You're seeing, you know, us teachers going to Piatone, teachers going in their own building um, to see each other. The other thing that is, that is really important for us to be as efficient and effective as possible is to make sure that what we're doing transfers not only from classroom to classroom within a grade level, but also across grade levels, and then as important, if not more important, across buildings. Mm -hmm. And so you're starting to see some of those things, and the more comfortable we get with those, the better results we'll see. And the good discussions that we haven't had in a while. Like, I often wonder with teachers, you know, is it, are we, do they need more training in some area, or do they need more freedom in some areas? You know, and so just having that freedom of, of going back and forth and learning and getting into the data and getting, I mean, that's, mm -hmm. It's a discussion I don't think that we've had much in the previous <coughs> couple of years, so it's really nice to hear more of it now, I think, than we have been. I mean, with you guys, I don't know whether you just, I don't know what you did behind the scenes. Or a routine, it's just. Yeah, or even just, I mean, sometimes you really want to do something, but you sort of feel like someone's going to say no, so you just don't. You know what I mean? But it, feel, it feels like, I don't know, it's a better energy. I like it, so thank you. It's team Team Beecher. Team Beecher. Team Beecher. All right. All right. Thank you. Um, <laughs> moving on to the old business. <clears throat> School resource officer. So this is a continued conversation, um, and I see the chiefs here as well. Um, you know, the uh, 
you know, the conversation <laughs> continues to be, um, you know, about about what it is that we're looking for. Um, is this is this about um, simply about security, or is it or is it so much more than that? You know, uh, when we did have a school resource officer, um, it it was not just somebody standing at the front door of the high school, um, you know, watching kids come in. It's really about developing relationships with students. It's about educational pieces. I know that, um, you know, at different times people have said, well, dare programs don't work because there, there's really never been any data to be able to support them. Um, in my last district, we had a dare program for the last 30 years. So the decade that I was there, we had dare in the fifth grade, and it was a huge positive. Um, it's an it's just one other opportunity to give kids um, a type of education. And so the conversation that we're, that we're having um, with respect to SRO is that um, if, the com if the conversation is gonna be just about security, then there are a lot of different models that we can do. But the SRO conversation is much deeper than that. I just, so I just wanna weigh in here. Just a little bit of what an SRO is. A lot of people think, you know, I, I was asked this by a community member. They said, is it just a security officer? And it's a police officer. They have arrest powers, okay? And many people know that there's certain things that they can and cannot do, even though they're, they're in the school. But I just want to touch on an SRO so that people get an understanding. They go through a 40-hour class. It's through the NEMAR program. And um, it's also part of, as, as a full-time officer. History of school-based policing, dysfunctional families, roles and responsibilities of the SRO, instructional techniques of classroom management, being a positive role model, school safety procedures and school-related law, they change as you're in the school. Uh, emergency management, officer safety, interview and counseling techniques. You talk to a child, you can't talk to a, an adult the same way you can talk to a child. Um, crime prevention, law-related education, even special education. The SRO okay, is training that. Student activities involvement, substance abuse issues. These are things that SRL does. A security officer is, is a still a police officer, but it doesn't have all that component. SRL brings that all. So I just want to make that clear because a few people have asked me. So I just want to make that clear for anybody. And I believe, Chief, you did say uh, SRL has to be a juvenile officer also. Yes. So there's additional Correct. training for that. Yes. So on top of the 500 hours from the academy, another week or two of the juvenile officer, juvenile investigations and then the SRO school itself. And the SRO school is continuing, is through the association, the SRO association. So it's constantly updated to the juvenile, the juvenile law. Probably changes the focus on all of our laws, constantly changing. So we have to be up to date with that. So I, I had questions about <coughs> this um, officer cost that was submitted to us. Mm -hmm. So it was like starting out at one base salary and what amount? I said previously, in 2010, we were paying 40% of the cost, and now you're, you, village, I don't know who wrote this up, okay. is anticipating that we were paying 60%. And it starts out at one number, it's, I'll just tell you, it's total 82306 and then over four years, it goes up to 110,032, yeah. which is like 33 and a half, almost 34% higher over four years. And I have a hard time justifying that when we're going into a negotiating year. Sure. And how do I say to the teachers, why can't I have a 34% increase? So it, it's just, I, I just looked at it and I'm like, where do we come up with 34% increase over four years? All of them went up. The, right. I mean, it's just, it's not, I mean, if we have, um, if now we're paying 60% as opposed to the 40%, I was wondering if it could be our employee and then, and because all these numbers are based on such a different model than our, our school district model, it looks like you're paying a lot more. You yeah. guys feel well, a lot more for yeah. help. Well, Carla, first if you, if you of all, you give me a second. I'll explain that to you. Yes, this I This is too. based on union contract right. for law enforcement. You're going to see an increase because insurance is, that's the biggest killer right there. I see that. Yeah, that's insurance. Huge. And you're 82, that's the, that's the total cost. So, I mean, your cost is it would be at the bottom. I understand. And I, then I, we would pay the time that he's not in the school. So, he basically, he's going to be in the school nine months out of the year, um, plus every half hour a day because the, in their contract, there were eight and a half hour days. So, he'll be eight hours at the school every day for a half hour, we would cover him. 
and also the time that he's not spending in the school. We would cover all the training, all the time he's in training, stuff like that. I, I, I share a lot of the same concerns too. I think the idea of a resource officer, I really like it. I've seen it in action. You know, so I, I'm not questioning the that. I think it might be a, a better way on it. I, I, and I agree looking at the cost. I'm seeing, at least as presented, perhaps a 10% or roughly a 10% increase in pay every year. The original cost, $58,000, you know, sold, you know what I mean? Yeah. You got me on the front door. <laughs> it's where is it going to go at the end? And I especially, when we look to 2023, I'm seeing a cost for the district, and I, I'm even seeing, like, the FICA and the MRF, and even more than we pay our administrators. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing health insurance of about $25,000, $27,000 a year for an employee that's working 186 days. And so pretty soon, in a matter of about three or four years, they're making the same money as some of our administrators are, working about 30 or so fewer days every year and about two hours less per day. And I, it's, it's hard to, to justify that. You know, because you guys, don't, you don't work eight-hour days. You're probably more like a 10-hour day lots of times, right? You know, and so, and you're working 200, 210, 220 days a year. It, it, it's tough to, I, I to figure out understood. four years down the line, understood. you know, if we can find a way to make that work. Because I don't know if we find a contract, does it just keep going up? I figured it out. It was 10.5% and then six and a quarter, six, seven, eight, <coughs> six, seven, eight. And I'm like, this is like 34% over four years. So basically, why don't we just multiply that out and we're at, it, you know. Yeah. I'm not here to negotiate for the village okay. and their fortune. <laughs> uh, I'm here to answer any questions you have actually okay. about an SRO. I didn't know who wrote this. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what in the world? You know, and, that, and that's and that's one of the that's one of the pieces <laughs> of the conversation is that okay. um, at no point at no point tonight does the board need to make a commitment. This is exactly what we're doing. The only thing that the board would do tonight is if this is a path you wanted to continue the conversation is pass a motion to continue to go into actual negotiations with the village so an intergovernmental agreement could be brought back. Because the chief isn't, I mean, this would have to go to the village board, correct, right. not through the chief. And okay. all of those figures, those are their insurance package and, you know, you can't put those, compare those to ours. Those are all different. It, it begs the question of... I think not necessarily selling one of them, but you need to look at all the options. I mean, we we talked about having our own person, you know, and if if we're talking that in five years this person's going to be making more than our junior high principal, that's that's a worthy discussion to be had, <laughs> you know. And so um, whether there's something or like you know if, if we're going to put out, I don't know how many. There's a movement. Oh, what do you call? It was a bill that ended up kind of getting stalled. It didn't go anywhere. But one of the 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 bills downstate recently was the idea of using some of the resource officer money, and could they use it to hire social workers instead? And I'm only raising this as a question. Like I say, I'm not saying because I, I do. I like the resource officer idea, but I think when you're talking about this kind of money, I want to make sure we've looked at everything. Yeah. Like, and it doesn't mean to be one or the other. But what about hiring the social worker? You know, if we're, what, if it's about the connections with the students, there's stuff, there's stuff a resource officer can do that nobody else can do. You know, like I said, I've seen the, the connection with the police officers. They find out stuff on the street. I mean, it's a really nice arrangement, but that's a lot of money real quick. And this doesn't say what's going to happen 10 years down the line, you know, and where they're making more than you. I'm for it, too. I was just looking at the numbers. And it even says on there it's assumed at 2.5%, and then you figured it out, and you're like, Whoa, how did they get those math numbers? <laughs> new math. Did you want to say something? No, it's not new math. I just point out, um, basically what we did with these numbers is we took an officer's salary for the year, compensation package, everything. So officer's not making 110000 at the end of that year. Yeah. That's what it costs to have an officer. Um, the school can't hire a police officer. You guys, you guys can't just go out and get your own police force. So if you want an SRO or a full-time officer, it's got to go through the police department. That's just the way it works. Um, as far as like the social worker and stuff, an SRO is a team member. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a 
police officer. It's not a social worker. It's not a kid's friend. It should be everything rolled up in one. Um, they're not just one school. They're going to be in all the schools. They should be doing programs, everything from teaching at the elementary, teaching them how to use the crosswalks, mm -hmm. um, to everything to high school and there, and everything in between. So um, I understand it's a whole money thing. We've had that conversation at the village level. Uh, unfortunately, it comes down to money. I wish it didn't, especially with the light of things that have happened. Um, I really wish I could just come here and say, hey, I can wave our magic wand. We're paying for it as long as you guys sign this. Let's not. It just can't happen. Yeah. I, I cannot put a dollar on, on a child or staff yes, thank you. or anybody. Thank you. That is my big mm -hmm. beef. Yes. When and you were sitting there, like Mrs. Weissel said, and she was giving the total cost, not the school district cost. Exactly. So exactly. it's broken thank up, you. plain as day. Well, so when she said 110000 that's not our cost. And that's our, cost, cost. our cost to 2023 is down to 78000 yeah. So yes, the numbers, yes, it is about money. But when it comes to safety for my kids, your kid, anybody's kids, right. there is no dollar amount. And I'm saying we can have no. the safety, but perhaps we can also negotiate a little bit. <laughs> I'm not putting a price tag on a child. Ever. I'll be damned to do that. I don't understand why it's going up 34% over, over that amount of time. And that where I work at the high school, the people are definitely employed for the district. I asked them. So... They might be security. But there's security. No, no, they're Wait, there's a big difference. There's a they're, big they're difference. They're not working under, I'm going to explain, okay? They're not working under the school board, okay? They're, they're hired by the school, but their credentials come from a law enforcement agency. They're, they're not, the school may hire them, because I know we have a couple in our, in our department that work for another school district, which I won't say, but their credentials come through the police department. You have to be credentialed in the state of Illinois as a law enforcement officer. The, the, okay. the school district can't do that. I, something we can hire security officers, but right. that's no. completely different. No. But, but some, are you making 20000 more now than you were four years ago? I, I doubt it. Me personally? Yeah. No, I work for the federal government. We haven't got okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's, that's the thing. That's, <laughs> that's where something, I don't think the police officer on the show, I don't think you're making 20000 more than you were two, four years ago. Maybe you are, and I'm just in the wrong field. I don't know, but it's like well, you know what? If you impressive. include insurance, retirement, and all that, yes. you very well could be. Yeah. Yes, you could. You got to yeah. include the big picture. It's cost of employment. It's not your yeah. paycheck. It is everything. No, I'm everything. looking at the seventy-eight thousand here. Somehow, it's going up twenty thousand dollars in four or five years, and but I can't figure it out. I'll give you a prime example. My salary at work, and every year when I get my little two or three percent raise, but it also includes my insurance. It includes my in, um, retirement. That goes from here to here. Am I making that? No, I'm really making this. But they're looking at it as the big mm -hmm. picture, as the total package. Because that's what it costs okay. your firm to employ you. Absolutely. Exactly. That is the total package right there. Okay. Well, the base salary okay. is up fourteen thousand over a five-year period. Fourteen thousand over a five-year period. Do the math. It's thirty-four mm. percent. I did the math. Again. No dollar amount would be on my kid's head, ever. Well, and again, I this is a specialist that you are hiring. And this is um, something, too, we have to hire a new officer. We have to train them. Uh, we have to give them a uniform. We have to find a vehicle for them to drive. You know, it, it's a lot of, not just money, it's a lot of time and energy. And for small departments, it, it's even more time and energy. Uh, and uh, uh, we, were, we were talking uh, time uh, line here. And probably the best we could do to get anybody on board is next school year. So we have to, to, to get them hired and, and trained on all of that. Uh, and you, know, you have to do your field training. Um, it takes quite a while. So uh, we have to make a decision if we want to go forward uh, with this. Otherwise, we're going to lose a lot of time. Do we have to make a motion tonight on that? Uh, I think a motion would be appropriate to to, uh, to continue the conversation. To yes. enter into negotiations okay. with the village on an IGA. Then I would like to make a motion to continue these talks. Okay. I'll second. Okay. Scrimenti. Karen? To oh. continue negotiate uh, yes. talk? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To continue the talk, yes. 
Mazurk? Yes. Herman? Yes. Weissel? Yes. Paul Meyer? Absolutely yes. Paul Masano? Yes. And Goldrick? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for Thank coming out, you. guys. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Marlon. Uh, yeah. Learn more copies of that. Sure. <clears throat> Thank you. In for, for, for the board. For the board. Yeah. Great. Oh, the playground project. So, continuing this conversation, um, I know that um, you know that I have approached the Education Foundation, <clears throat> and um, they are very much taking a, wa a wait and see approach. They have a meeting on Friday night, and they will, are looking to see exactly what the Board of Education's intent is on phase two. Um, once again, I put in my report my assumption, not a promise, just trying to read tea leaves. My assumption is, is that if the board <laughs> says this is something we're going to do, that the Education Foundation will, will partner with that. Um, once again, I'm not. I don't get to vote on any of that, but uh, the playground, I, and as I always felt, has fall, it should fall under facilities. I, I like I stated at the PTO. I, I thank you guys for all you do, but I believe it should have fell under facilities because that that is an aging playground out there. But like I said, I think it's I think it's a, it's our responsibility as a board of education and a school to help out. Thank you. Okay. I'm with you. I agree. Any other? So, do, so does so the board, does the board want to make a motion to move forward on phase two of the project? Motion. Can you explain like, just define again phase two? Yeah. Um, phase explicit. two is define again phase two. <laughs> it's paying it's, for the rest of the playground. Right. Mm -hmm. It's it's the it's the, the initial it's the was bigger, 16, bigger, it's, the it's the single bigger, bigger piece of the playground. Piece. Yes. yes. So, so what yeah. was it? Forty. So the total Eight. cost of the playground is like around forty-eight thousand. Mm -hmm. Okay. We've raised Thirteen, 13. three okay. for the phase one. Right. So that would be about thirty-five thousand dollars right. remaining. Yes. So are you looking? You. Are you looking, Mr. Coxon, for the amount that we no. contribute? No, I'm just looking for a commitment by the Board of Education to move forward on phase two. I will make a motion. I second. second. Okay, Ms. Urich. Yes. Herman. Yes. Weissel. Yes. Palmer. Yes. Palmasano. Yes. Goldberg. Yes. Scramenti. Yes. Motion carried. Okay. Thank you. All right. Board goals. Here. So this is exciting. We're getting close. Getting close to the end here. And uh, uh, once again, I want to applaud the work that you all have done um, because we have some really great areas defined. Um, we're to a point now where if we want to do any tweaking or wordsmithing, um, I know that Carla had um, a few edits that she would like to uh, talk about. Well, I mean, I didn't pass them out. I, I, I shared them, um, and then you kind of had some ideas, and they sounded good. Um, they sounded good. I just kind of... Um, what you were talking about, it just said, um, so the district will, number two, the district will provide a modern functional campus that meets the educational needs of all, and it just said students. I didn't know if we wanted to just delete everything or also include staff and community members or just delete like students. We want it to be bigger than just students. And what makes me think of that is like the junior high, it doesn't have enough bleachers and it doesn't have enough parking. So, so that's. That's number two. That's where I was thinking of okay. number two. <laughs> Did you have any conversation? I, it was not no. easier than one. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it was easier no, than wonderful. one. That's why I started with two. I don't have to lead this. I just mm -hmm. looked at it. That's one of the first things I'm I talked sure to Brad about when we had our one-on-one. I'm in. No, and I, think, and I think that's a great addition because facilities are not just about students. They're about functionality for staff. They're about... Um, Ease of use and engagement for our community. So, mm -hmm. I think the, I think those are great edits, Carla. I don't have enough parking in my building either. Sorry, <laughs> 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 that out there. Right. If there's extra. He paid her more. <laughs> we'll put you on the agenda for May. <laughs> I I know in um, the 
<laughs> Carly, your, your point on number one, talking about the enrollment. Oh, I was, yeah, I was going to go back to that. Oh, that sorry, go bigger. ahead. I was just th the other ones okay. were easier. That's what I was oh, like. Gotcha. Let's get gotcha. I might lead. I didn't mean to lead this. I just put time into it. I was looking at it. Um, so because I was the one who was trying to get the board message, and then as I was looking at it, I was like, well, everything I wrote was for the board message. I was thinking we could just kind of delete that and start like this is a board message. It's a huge, huge. Board that's why message. I really wanted it to be good, and that's why I put a lot of, you know, I retyped it, and I'm like, oh, it, it was a great start. I mean, you, we worked on it, and. You know, I, you know, I love what you did with it, and then I was like, oh, let's try to make this really good, and I thought this could be our first board message. So, and so I don't know how you guys feel about those changes on two, or if anybody, I don't mean to take this over, I just worked on it. So. Okay. Too good. What about three? Well, wait, wait three? let's back up on no, two. Up. Okay. When it says emphasis on student safety, it should oh. be all safety. Community. Oh, okay. It, it, <laughs> take out the word student, basically, in that yes. second part. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. It did seem out of place based on the other edit. Yeah. You want to go to three? Is everybody ready to go to three? Um, you had some changes for three that I thought sounded good. Yeah, so I, I, kind of like. Yeah, I think that. Um, I, I trust me. I understand. Trust me. I pay property tax soon too. Should we read I, it? I get you guys it. Want to so, so it uh, said the district will strive to maintain healthy reserves. And then I added, and affordable property taxes while providing the resources necessary to support the other board goals. So I wanted to add affordable property taxes. Yeah, and, and so, and so property them. taxes are very, uh, are obviously, I mean, we, you saw our slide from earlier, 78% of the f funds that we get are for property taxes. Um, but affordable property taxes is a very subjective term. Mm -hmm. uh, my last school district, uh, our total property tax uh, rate was under three dollars as a unit district so which is half of ours and the last time we tried to do a referendum and, and raise it 30 cents it failed miserably so it's subjective right it's very situational um, I do think it's a and I wouldn't have any issue at all um, with saying that to put some kind of an I don't remember what I typed now Carla um, oh, but but to, but to say up. that the board will be mindful of property tax rates in the financial conversation because that's because that's what you want you want the board to always be mindful of what they're asking people to pay well in the that was, I was exactly what I was saying the old talked about being fiduciary responsibility <laughs> yeah. you know to the you know and a lot of the thing that's that's do you remember exactly how it was phrased yeah he just I don't oh yeah. I know. but I, I but I think that was something there too I mean that's what we go for every decision that that's my whole discussion right. they left you know about the resource officer I want the resource officer but I also I want to too. make sure we're being fiscally responsible about how we do right. it the best way for that's the taxpayers to pay for it you know so I don't like the wording affordable property taxes <laughs> but, and we'll he get it better well we have such little control over the, the property tax. We do. Really, we The we largest do. form of the state government tells the smallest form of state government what to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We it don't should be the it. reverse. Do, do you guys, do you, do you understand that the highest, highest part of your uh, property tax is the school district? Oh, yes. Okay. I brought, but a lot of that is. Okay. So what, I, I'm just I brought saying, my Karen, tax a lot that, of that, that comes of from right. down in Springfield. Right. Yeah. That's mandated not by right. us, but by. Right. Like Karen said, in Springfield. And elsewhere in this state. Uh, so, so, what, so what I had um, was, while being mindful of the impact that property taxes have on the community and its citizens. And what is affordable to me might not, not be affordable, affordable to you. That's yeah, what right. I said. That could That's be misconstrued mm -hmm. tenfold. Do we want something sure. there about being, like, responsible? The way you the, said mindful, mindful. Of, I, mindful. I, 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 had, I had while being in uh, instead of and affordable property taxes, I had while being mindful of the impact that property taxes have on the community and its citizens. Because well, it's not just individual taxpayers, it's the businesses as well. I'm going a step beyond the just the property taxes, but what we spend on a day to day basis. You know, when you when you see the question wondering about a five hundred dollar expenditure that may or may not need to be there it's still a responsible use of the funds that won't affect our tax rate really you wanted to make it bigger strive to maintain right. healthy reserves maybe comma 
but but that's a part yeah. of maintaining mm -hmm. healthy reserves, being mindful of how you spend money, because you're not just going to blow it on everything because then you can't have. Well, maybe that's maybe that's the way it should be, and how you spend the money, not just the property tax rate. That's what I'm throwing in. Or both, or I don't know. No, I property like, but tax I like, like, I like what Brad says, the mindful though. of the tax, yeah, because that's what you're taking in, and then but mindful and we, of what and you're putting out. we disperse it out responsibly, fiscally. Use of the resources, yeah. like it says. Yeah. I mean, it's. Okay. I like what you say. Showing the like yin and the yang, and I like your wording. Do you want to read it again? Sure. So then the goal three would read. Uh, the district will strive to maintain healthy reserves while being mindful of the impact that property taxes have on the community and its citizens. Boom, taking out the whole thing about providing resources. You, you took out that whole clause. Oh, oh. yeah, no. that's an ending with, sorry, while providing the resources necessary to support the other board goals. Okay. okay. It has the healthy reserves still in there, right? Yep. Yeah. Agreed? Yeah. Yep. Sounds good. It's connected in some way. It is actually. It is. It is a it couple of, yeah, lately. I didn't change it must, it must be new. Are we moving on to four? <laughs> I didn't no, I was just I was just rereading four. I didn't see it highlighted. Okay. I didn't change four said community engagement and it said the district will engage the community through communication, partnerships, and alumni connectedness. And those are all the things that you mm -hmm. that you all uh, put together in our work sessions. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number one. That was a little bit bigger because there was a bunch of it was comma mm -hmm. heaven over there. <laughs> it was too much. That's why I kind of <clears throat> should I read what it was? It said academic excellence. The district will continue its focus <coughs> on academic excellence including but not limited to an emphasis on academic opportunities and supports, increased student achievement through advances in technology, and the implementation of best practices in curriculum, instruction, and assessment, while developing a strong organizational culture in an effort to retain quality education educators. This, in turn, will allow for the continuation of Beecher 200U's excellent educational reputation, which will promote stability in the district student enrollment. I did change, continue to extend. I just thought it would just I use like a different that. word. You like that? Um, yeah, I like that as well. And then I just thought it was too too many commas, and I kind of wanted to end it with that educational, excellent educational reputation, just to kind of end it on a positive, because I know that when people read read information, they be, they read generally tend to read the beginning and the end, and sometimes the middle gets lost. So I kind of wanted to just really end that really positively so that's why I changed it to this but then you had some thoughts that we were kind of including everything I was just trying to make sure that it was worded as well as it could be too many too many commas and at first I don't like the words in an effort to retain quality educators I don't you don't like that part? I don't like the wording there. What word, Janet? In, um, in an effort to retain quality educators. Just. What if you put, I'm sorry. No, please. Go ahead. To ensure, um, like, instead of, um, in an effort to ensure the retention of quality educators. Ensuring retention. You want to hit it almost even a little more positively about not just retaining them, but growing them, improving them. You know, like offering opportunities for. Because we have in the last contract, we a lot of teachers have taken advantage. Mm -hmm. right. We're, almost, we're growing them. We're. Yeah. 
We are losing stuff. Some of the focus on the enrollment too. I'm not sure if that's one of those things that just happens. But well, the, I, well, I, I feel like it's so hard to monitor the enrollment. Well, like, the conversation. Take, let's 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 stick on the, the uh, educators. Yeah, retaining quality educators. That was something that was specifically talked about during our work sessions. Mm -hmm. Right. Retaining quality, quality. educators. Right. right. Be because we have because we have lost at times quality educators. I just don't like that wording, and it's it like. Okay. It's an effort. Yeah, I just, it's, something's just not jiving. You're like in an effort. Like in an effort to, you yeah. know, it, it says it's not good. But it's, it, and it exactly. Is good. It, it is good. It is, but it doesn't sound good. Yeah. When I'm How about it. just saying uh, organizational culture? And retention of? In retaining quality educators. Okay. If you just take but, out in an effort. Take out that phrase yeah. in yeah. an effort. 